This is Appalling News. I'm Paul Chow. Thank you for joining us. The war continues in the Middle East, threatening to expand, and so the city of Chicago recently voted to demand a ceasefire in Gaza, in a region a world away that has nothing to do with the Windy City, except that it is also run by criminals, but it probably still has its Walmarts. Will Hamas and Israel be listening? No, of course not. Perhaps after 2022's 2,600 shootings and 620 homicides, city council would have been better served by voting for a ceasefire in Chicago. Here in Canada, the federal government of junta leader Justin Trudeau continues to fund not-for-profit organizations dedicated to helping men replace women. An Alberta bill that would ban male-bodied athletes from women's sports in the province has come under fire from, you guessed it, Canadian women and sport. In this tweet, they proclaimed, to transgender girls and women across Canada, you belong in sport. They followed this with a response to the Alberta legislation. Regarding the headline, we agree, male-bodied athletes belong in sport just not in female-only sports. Regarding the claim that the policy is not based on evidence, what they meant was the meager evidence they cherry-picked that supported their bias. We might suggest that they read the CAS report from the UK and recent Swedish findings. Regarding the policy will cause harm, this is also a claim without evidence, unless you're referring to the recent incident at a swim meet in Ontario of a 50-year-old male-bodied individual openly dangling their sausage party in front of 12 to 14-year-old girls in a change room. Notice we use the possessive pronoun so as not to offend them. And finally, girls' sport is for all girls, for which we'd like to ask Canadian women in sport does that include murderers who self-ID just to get into a woman's prison? As an addendum, after we pointed out that while they are very gung-ho about encouraging penises in women's change rooms, they are still maintaining age categories. They blocked us. One has to have priorities. In entertainment news, stand-up comedian Shane Gillis will be hosting Saturday Night Live on February 24th featuring music guest 21 Savage. What's noteworthy about this announcement is that Shane was fired from the cast of SNL back in 2019 after only one day when they found what they interpreted as racist jokes on his podcast. Since then, Shane's career has exploded, which is why he is now hosting SNL. There's no whore like an old whore. A couple of things crossed our minds. Does anyone watch SNL anymore? Who is 21 Savage? We have not recognized the musical performer for the last 15 years, and the acts have been dreadful except for Lil Wayne with Halsey and Billie Eilish. Finally, we expect at least half of the 85 cast members to boycott the show the way they did when Elon Musk hosted the highest rated show of the year because when you want to understand the business of show business, just ask an entitled SNL cast member. White Democrats and liberals eager to bathe in the sweat of their own guilt from laughing and enjoying the Cosby show have been conspicuously absent recently when Democrats bust illegal immigrants into Boston and put them up in the fancier parts of Boston? <laughs> no, not in your life. In a recreational center in a black community, shutting the center off from the constituents that use it. Counselors were at pains trying to convince reporters that what they meant was Boston is a sanitary city, not a sanctuary city. But no one was buying it. And finally, has anyone noticed that Greta Thunberg is getting a bit chunky? Perhaps she needs to get out of those limos and private planes and do some walking. Maybe it's that scarf that makes her look fat. 
This has been Appalling News, and that's the way it is.